Hoi! The new world patch hasn't hit PTR yet, but it's already been updated. And because of that, new world database, nwdb.info, already has all of the skills for the blunderbuss available. And we can have a look at the skill trees. There are some things about the skill trees that make me think that they're a little bit buggy at the moment. This is specifically in the chaos tree. I'll show you later on. But we can look at all of the abilities, and not only that, we can also look at the armor perks, uh, as well as some crafting stuff for the blunderbuss, and so on. So there's a lot of information to go through. I actually quickly want to show you the crafting recipe for the Orichalcum blunderbuss, because this is something that I think uh, is somewhat important if you want to prepare for the upcoming patch. Um, so now we know the materials that you'll need for it. Uh, and it's primarily orichalcum, or obviously if you want to have the highest quality, then Asmodium. And then the secondary would be Glittering Ebony, and the third would be Runic Leather. But by far the most important material here uh, will be Asmodium. So unfortunately it's not going to create a market balance where Glittering Ebony will go up uh, significantly in value, because what it's really going to hinge on is the Asmo primarily, and that's already expensive on most markets anyway. So yeah, that's uh, when it comes to crafting it, so nothing new there really. Um, but when it comes to the skills, we have a lot. So let's begin with the containment tree and uh, look at the individual skills, the upgrades and the armor perks. The first one here is Net Shot. It fires a large-sized net projectile out of the blunderbuss, dealing 40% weapon damage, so relatively low by itself. The net is a large projectile that will slow anyone hit uh, by 40% for 2.5 seconds. What this doesn't really specify is uh, how this projectile moves, or uh, if it's like only like if it stops on the first target that it, that it catches, or how exactly this whole net mechanic works. So yeah, I'd like to know more about that, and that we can only test uh, once PTR is up. Uh, if standing still or moving backwards, the recoil from this attack will knock you further backwards. If moving sideways or forwards, you will continue uh, forward unhindered. This is a great step up from the hatchet throwing ability, uh, which always pushes you backwards and which can be very frustrating in some situations. So here you have a lot more control and you can use this for safety to get away from enemies, but only if your input matches that. So the first uh, upgrade here is if natural hits a target, reduces cooldown by 20%. Uh, given that the cooldown is only 20 seconds at base, this can go pretty low, I would say. Um, but yeah, I'm assuming this is not going to stack with multiple targets because it says if it hits a target. So it's limited to 20% here. Um, then there's Apparatus. The net now inflicts a 50% slow that degrades to normal move speed over 5 seconds. So this doesn't mean that you have 50% the entire time, but rather it starts at 50% and then slowly goes down back to normal speed. Uh, over 5 seconds though is pretty good in my opinion and it definitely beats the base value here of 40% for 2.5 seconds in my opinion. Overall the uh, amount of slow that you get out of it uh, should be a fair bit better. And then last but not least you have barb netting. Netshot's initial hit damage is reduced to 5% weapon damage, however it now deals 35% additional weapon damage as poison each second for 3 seconds. Uh, Makes it a fair bit better, it's 110% weapon damage. I'm not the biggest fan of damage over time, but I'll take it. Like, it's still gonna be a lot more damage than just having 40% once. So I think it's it's probably worth it. Again, it depends a lot on how the projectile behaves. This is like a multiple target thing and all that, but I would say it's, it's probably gonna be pretty decent overall. Now, if 40% slow on its own, or even at 50% slow, it doesn't feel like the greatest thing in my opinion. I think slows in New World uh, on their own aren't super, super crazy compared to something like a graph while pulling you in. However, this comes with a very interesting additional perk, and that is Exhaustive Net Shot. Um, net Shot inflicts exhaust, reducing target stamina regeneration by 34% for 8 seconds. So this is an, something you can put on your uh, blunderbuss or on your armor. And I think this perk is very interesting. Uh, that's not necessarily to say that it's going to be OP, because we've had some stem region effects beforehand that didn't really feel that good on the hammer, for example, the exhaustive attacks. That, however, as far as I'm aware, is a lower value. We can actually check real quick. I think the hammer should be 20%. Uh, yeah, 20%. And I think 34% is something that should be a fair bit more noticeable. 
So in combination with the slow, uh, kind of punishes you for dodge spamming, especially. Like obviously when you get slowed, you might want to dodge away, but especially if you're in like medium armor, that regeneration reduction could hit you fairly hard. So this is the, the first role that we can go down here. Let's look at the next ability next. And that is, oh, we can go up here a bit, Claw Shot. Now Claw Shot, I think is the one that people uh, generally look forward to the most. It's probably the, the coolest sounding one, at least in terms of how it functions. And uh, essentially what it is, is a grappling hook. Shoot forward a four pronged claw attached to a chain from the muzzle. The projectile will travel up to 14 meters and cannot pull you upwards more than three meters. This wording initially confused me. I actually thought that this meant it cannot pull you further than three meters, uh, but I think it actually doesn't mean that. Uh, Dotsy pointed out to me that it could actually refer to height, and I think that is uh, what it actually is. I think um, what this is telling us is that you can't go up, say, for example, if the enemy tends to climb up somewhere, or chooses to climb up somewhere, and you fire the net shot on them, uh, you will not be able to follow them up like a high ledge or something. But you will probably be able to actually follow them the full distance of the projectile, is what I'm assuming this means, because otherwise this ability would really not make much sense. So if this connects to an enemy, it'll deal 40% weapon damage and inflict a root for one second before quickly pulling you towards them. Uh, the pull can be cancelled by any ability use or primary fire. So this is something we have to be careful with, uh, not to end up cancelling it with your primary fire. But it seems like even if you were to not pull, like even if you cancel the pull, you would still get the one second route. So you can get the one second route and then just shoot, for example, if you don't need to do the pull towards them. Because uh, I don't know what's going to happen to them while you get pulled towards them, if they can already move, if they're still on the route, uh, if you land where they were rooted or if you land where they are afterwards. So it's a few like more specific parts um, that would be interesting to know. This is also Torn Gem compatible, uh, which is obviously convenient if you're using this as a tank weapon because you can ranged tank a lot better. Uh, and it actually has some nice tools for, for tanking, I think, between the slow and the grappling and, and another ability we get to later. But it's just a uh, four second taunt, and I think it's also just single target, so it's probably not the best taunt. Also on a 20 seconds cooldown. Now, in and out is a very interesting effect. Upon usage, restore eight stamina every second for 10 seconds. This is big. We can compare this, I guess, with the Oblivion. Why is my voice all so glitched here? Um, I'm not even sure if the stamina region is. Ah, here. Yeah, it is. Uh, stamina region is 15 per second, obviously for yourself and friendlies, uh, while in the Oblivion, but you know, that's on a six second duration. Uh, with the Blunderbuss, you get this eight, sec uh, the eight uh, stamina, which is obviously half basically, a fair bit less. Um, but you get it no matter where you go, you're not locked to a specific location. And I think that's very important. And that's something that drastically increases your mobility, your chase potential. Where, like, my biggest question would obviously immediately be, uh, will this last once you switch to another weapon or not? But we'll see later that the Blunderbuss generally has a lot of effects that discourage you uh, from switching to another weapon, which is a little bit weird, considering it also has that inscaling, which kind of makes it seem like a secondary weapon for certain playstyles. But, yeah, I'm not quite sure how, how that's meant to be uh, used yet, but we'll find out, I guess. And then the next perk here is Combat Readiness. Uh, landing Appellant, even if blocked, lowers the cooldown of this ability by 2% each. So what I'm not quite sure about here is the, is the number of pellets. I know that you have an effect later on that. Okay, so it's, it says actually the base value. So it's six pellets per shot. And by default, your magazine has two shots, I think. Uh, and in certain conditions, you can, you can get three uh, shots. So, well, roundabout, I would say, you can probably, if you're close to someone, I'm assuming you're not going to hit like all the pellets all the time, but let's just say you hit five pellets and you get 10% cooldown reduction on this ability per shot. You can do two quick shots, that's like a 20% reduction. That's not crazy. I mean, we get that on, on the net shot perk uh, if we just hit a target, but 
Still, this could be pretty good, especially depending on, on the fire rate of the weapon as well. If you can very frequently shoot, then obviously you can frequently reduce the cooldown, which again, with 20 seconds, isn't particularly long to begin with, and we also have other cooldown reduction perks. Then we also have successfully landing a claw shot will automatically grant you one loaded ammunition. If you currently have two loaded ammunition, this will exceed the max cap and grant you a third. So this helps directly with this cooldown reduction perk, obviously, because uh, this can get you to 30% cooldown reduction. Because even if you have only one shot in your magazine or something, you already fired the other shot before, probably. So depending on the situation, you may be able to get more reduction either way. So overall, a very interesting ability. Uh, very interested to see how it actually feels and how hard or easy it is to hit. Uh, the armor perk for it is Venturing Claw Shot. When Claw Shot connects to a target at least 10 meters away, gain a 19% empower for 3 seconds or until next hit. Now, this is not the strongest perk ever. Uh, not by far, especially because you're probably usually going to chain the net shot itself with uh, a normal uh, blunderbuss shot afterwards and then use the next ability like basically as a cancel. But it's still a nice and power to have. So against a ranged target, if someone is running away from you, they can essentially get punished for that um, by giving you a tiny bit more extra damage. Or not a tiny bit, like 90% is quite good, but again, just for one hit. So not the craziest, but definitely something interesting, something worth keeping in mind. But then we also have the third ability in the tree here. That's the Azoth Shrapnel Blast. Fires five shots in a horizontal fan in front of you, while pushing yourself backwards. This time you can apparently not prevent uh, getting fired backwards, whereas here you can. But keep in mind, third ability that has some form of mobility. Either you pull yourself towards the enemy or you shoot yourself away from them in two different ways. Each shot will deal 58% weapon damage. However, each consecutive hit on the same target will deal 15% less damage than the previous hit uh, on a 14 seconds cooldown. Worth keeping in mind that you can still easily reach above 100% weapon damage, especially when we go down to 3 further. So, we have reach increasing the range of this attack from 12 to 60 meters. That is actually pretty far, uh, considering, like, I think that Reap's max range, let's check that just to uh, have a frame of reference, uh, should be... Uh, where is it? Yeah, Reap's max range, when you, like, upgrade it, is 8 meters. Um, so this looking at uh, 12 to 16 meters, double the reap range, that's actually a pretty huge field. Uh, so even if you're not hitting like uh, full damage on like a single target, even if it's spraying an area with this could be pretty effective just to apply a decent amount of damage to a lot of targets uh, very quickly. May not be able to compete with a fire mage though, so I'm not really sure. Um, that can be <laughs> compensated for if you add Discord, fire four additional pellets with each use of the ability. And uh, then, also, you have Refresh here. Each individual hit from this ability or from the Blunderbuss primary fire will lower the cooldown of this ability by 1.5%. Uh, now, this is lower than this one in comparison, right? Because... Uh, the uh, blunder well actually it might not be because it says each individual hit from it could actually also refer to each individual hit from the primary fire which could then refer to the pellets as well and then it would operate very similar to this i'm not even sure it would actually make more sense but uh either way it seems like you could get some decent cool reduction out of this as well especially if you really like shotgun it and you're really close to the enemy when using it so it seems like a general theme in this tree is have at least some variation of cooldown reduction. But where it gets really interesting is the last one here. Azoth Bomb. Fire a singular bomb down the center of the fan. This bomb will impl uh, implant? Im implant itself? No? <laughs> uh, in the world and explode, dealing 100% damage in a 3 meter area after a 0.5 seconds delay. This is a very short delay. This is a pretty large radius. A 3 meter radius is not bad. Uh, I think think it may be matching the current fireball radius after the buff and it's as far as i understand it on top of this damage i'm not sure if it replaces the middle shot or something but i'm assuming you actually still get that damage and then this afterwards so if you're relatively close to a graph well and you can nuke this into a graph well 
Uh, that could be very interesting. I'm not sure if the bomb will stop on a target, though. Like, I'm not sure if, like, someone is in the graph well, if the bomb will just travel through them. So it depends on that a little bit as well. But overall, most certainly an ability that has potential uh, to just have very, very high damage. The perk for it is simply leeching. So deal for or heal for 15% of the damage dealt from Aethos Shrapnel Blast. I'm assuming that's not going to be super crazy. But it could be nice just depending on the, like, like just based on the area that's covered, right? Like 60 meters. So uh, if you can hit a lot of targets, it might actually be a pretty significant heal as well. Hard to say uh, without testing it. But usually leeching perks are like kind of okay. Like leeching Path of Destinies is decent, but it's not like the biggest priority for most people. And as we've covered everything else in this tree, um, let's have a look at the other perks here real quick. Future Endeavors. If you land five or more pellets in a single shot, Restore one stamina per pellet hit. I don't really know about this one. This seems kind of uh, not particularly impressive to me. Maybe I'm underestimating it, but I don't really see the need for this, to be honest. Um, then we have Run and Gun. Reloading gives you a speed boost of 40% that decays over one second. I think this one is big because you get that every two shots. Fire two shots and you get 40% speed boost for one second and again and again, which basically covers the time that you're going to use to reload and like leave you a little bit safer in that very moment. Then we have Ramp. Reloads give you a b damage boost of 4% for 6 seconds, stacks up to 4 times. So this is where I'm talking about uh, you kind of get discouraged from swapping off the weapon because obviously this feels like you want to keep spamming shots on the blunderbuss in order to keep this effect up, keep this going all the time. Uh, not sure. And then we have Deep Load. The last shot loaded into the blunderbuss will do 15% increased damage. If you just have two shots, or three max, this is a very consistent, frequent damage increase by 15%. So this is something that, you know, it's a 7.5 damage increase uh, on all your light attacks, basically. So I think that's pretty worth. And uh, then we have Fortifying Aggression. Successful hits grant three, uh, within three meters grant Fortify, increasing damage absorption by 10% for two seconds. I kind of like this. It's just like, all right, you know, if you're gonna come really close and fight me at close range, then at least I, I get a little bit of an advantage, but not like, not like void play levels of advantage essentially. And then the last perk here is unload. The next shot fired within six seconds after triggering an ability will have nine pellets instead of six. This effect can stack after two times, which is very interesting. Which makes me wonder if there's like some benefit to stacking it multiple times because I don't know where the additional pellets get placed. Maybe if they all get placed towards the center, it might be worth doing like, uh, you know, claw shot into Aethos Shrapnel Blast and then using your shot afterwards. Also depends a lot on how the cancels work and how the reload works and everything else. But uh, it could be interesting. It could be interesting. We'll have to find out. But now let's look at the right side where uh, things are a little bit messier. The first ability here is Splitting Grenade. And I, I think this is arguably the weirdest ability in this whole thing. So, Splitting Grenade. Shoot a grenade out of the blunderbuss that will bounce up to four times and will detonate after 1.5 seconds. The Splitting Grenade can also be manually detonated by reactivating its ability key at any time. Okay, so far so good. Upon detonation, it will create three mini grenades that will disperse and explode one second after landing, dealing 85% weapon damage in a three meter area. So as far as I understand it, based on the scaling and how it's described here, uh, the initial grenade doesn't deal any damage even when it detonates. It's only the mini grenades that actually do damage. And then each successive grenade hit against the same target deals 40% less base damage, so it doesn't get too overwhelming on a single target. On a 30 seconds cooldown, I'm not sure what to do with this. Because on one hand, it seems like the damage is very delayed. Like one second after the... Like first it bounces and then once it's activated, it's still another second. And then the damage that you get in return is good, but not crazy good. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm really not quite sure where where this is going, and I'm I'm looking like at, at shrapnel blast in comparison, which basically get this instant damage on a on a large area, uh, and then there's the next question is like how do these three mini grenades like bounce away from each other? Like is it actually possible to hit the same target? So I'm not sure. Maybe this is purely a PVE ability. Maybe this is purely for uh, bosses in dungeons. 
could be very strong there. But I, I'm not sure how to, like, effectively, like, if this will be usable in PvP at all. The next perk is uh, Soften. Deals 25% increased damage to targets greater than 50% health. Okay, fair enough. Then we have Delayed Escape. Any grenade hit grants haste, increasing movement speed by 20% for 3 seconds. Multiple hits will refresh the duration when they hit. Uh, be, again, something that, like, this is more of a PvP perk, but I'm not sure if this is going to be a PvP ability. And there's two other perks here that I think are actually connected uh, to this, and I think this is where the the uh, right that the Chaos Tree is just a bit messed up at the moment, because the next one... Um, no, sorry, this one is actually from Morda Church, this one here. I think this one is actually down here, basically, and this one is down here, and then that stuff is over here, like, everything is, like, pushed a row to the side. Because uh, we have... Incendiary bursts here, and that's splitting grenade explosions will inflict burn on hit, dealing 10% weapon damage per second for 10 seconds. Stacks up to three times. This is where the real damage of this ability sits. This would be 100% weapon damage. And then if you have three stacks on a target, this would be 300% weapon damage, which is far more than this <laughs> can really deal because like these effects get reduction. Uh, this doesn't seem to get any reduction. But, again, it depends a lot on how it is to confirm. Like, maybe this is like a, a case of, of Mighty Gavel, essentially. Like, can do ridiculous damage, but you will pretty much never apply it in PvP. But maybe this is something you can follow up on a graph well and actually blow up, and it's crazy damage on everyone. I'm really not sure. Um, we'll have to find out, but, yeah. It's, it's a strange one to me so far. And then we have Mortar Charge. This one is basically uh, much much like splitting grenade as well, but even more so. Uh, like the artillery play style, if you basically want to play blunderbuss but more like a mage, I suppose. So this one is load the blunderbuss with heavy canisters. For the next 15 seconds or three shots, shots will no longer fire multiple pellets, but instead fire a heavy, fast diving mortar style canister that causes a tall explosion upon impact, dealing 126% weapon damage in a 3 meter area. If the target is 10 meters away or further, they will take 35% increased damage from the mortar. This is on an 18 seconds cooldown. It honestly sounds kind of terrifying, not gonna lie. Uh, I'm not really sure, like, how hard it will be to land and, and how, how hard it will be to apply, essentially, but the concept itself of like just raining down massive AoE damage. Kind of scary. Then the next perk here is steady. Each hit grants seven stamina. I'm just... It's nice, but you know, this exists. <laughs> uh, in that very moment, get some stamina. It's okay, it's not bad. It's just not like priority, I would say. Uh, and then there's freedom. With each shot fired, gain a burst of 50% movement speed, which decays in power over three seconds. So I, I suppose this is like to reposition after using a mortar charge and, and just uh, not be like focused out at the same time. But at the same time, you can still use the other abilities. So I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure what's up with the movement speed in this tree. <laughs> uh, I guess there's like less safety in the tree otherwise. So they figure they got to give you something. Uh, maybe, maybe that's the idea behind it. And then um, I think... No, this, this like the extended chamber, I'm not sure. I think this may just be uh, a base thing. This may not be referring to um, to the mortar charge, but the streak absolutely is. Because this is gain an extra canister, you can now fire up to four shots. Additionally, each mortar charge will hit, uh, hit will increase damage further. Uh, no, sorry. Each mortar charge hit will increase damage from future mortar charge hits in the next six seconds by 10%, up to a maximum of 30%. So again, uh, this could be pretty terrifying. It depends a lot on the firing speed as well. But if you can nuke like three, four shots into a graph wall, and that it actually works like that, absolutely, absolute carnage. Like with the damage values that we have here, that, that, that's just scary. That is just really, really scary. And then we have this perk here, which like, it's, it's weird. Um, because I, I don't know why it's going around this corner, but this perk is not applying to this, so maybe maybe this perk would just be further to the right. Uh, extended chamber, holding onto uh, two loaded ammunition for two seconds after a reload will load a third active ammunition. Either way, 
something that I would absolutely want. Like it's an extra shot if you're not fighting, especially in a war or an outpost rush. There are always brief downtimes, and in those downtimes you would just get an extra shot, and then you can shoot three shots at an enemy. Uh, I wonder what would happen if you have uh, this perk here, uh, and you can actually like you already have three shots. Can you get a fourth shot as well? Kind of cool. But then again, I guess maybe the the uh, hook shot itself uses a shot of ammo, so it would just use the first shot. I'm not sure, but yeah, seems cool. I'm really not sure which which of the abilities will actually end up using ammunition in itself. I'm I'm assuming most of them, if not all, because they're all shot effects essentially, except uh, mortar charge. Here, I guess. Uh, yeah, but we'll have to see what like what that means if you can reload immediately after or whatever. And then we have blast shot here, which um, may very well be the scariest ability. Uh, it's it's not the one that you'd look at first, but Actually, blast immense wind out of the blunderbuss and knocking down any target immediately in front of you. Blast shot deals 70% weapon damage on a 30 seconds cooldown. AoE knockdown in front of you. What I don't know is how the, the, the projectile size width or whatever it is. Like, I don't know if it's a cone or like a half circle in front of you. Uh, it just says immediately in front of you without further specifying it but at the same time it seems like it's not too small of an area which i'll explain in just a second so the next perk here make it even interest more interesting uh, blast shot applies a rend increasing damage applied to all targets affected by this ability by 20 percent for six seconds that is massive i would not be surprised if that rend gets nerfed because a 20 percent rend aoe pretty scary and then the perk here lingering flow is so interesting the area 10 meters in front of you remains influenced by wind for the next 8 seconds. So this must be Blast Shot because that's the only one that mentions wind. Uh, you and your allies gain a 25% movement speed bonus while in the area. So what I'm wondering is, is the range of this ability 10 meters? I kind of doubt it. That would be extremely long. But like, how long is the range of Blast Shot really? Is it enough to cover like the area of a graph well and all the enemies in it? Because if yes, that's all you need. So many graph wells or you grab all yourself if you're using a great X, drop a blast shot in there with a rend and whoever is in there is going to die. Like, it's no discussion at that point. And you can, you can follow it up with slows or with mortar or whatever you have, but knockback is an extremely strong CC in New World because unlike uh, stuns, it doesn't get cance canceled when you just get hit by something. And a knockback, or a knock down rather, even it's even better. Not, not just a knockback, it's a knockdown, sorry. Um, Knockdown with a rend is just absolutely insane. Then we have some other perks in the tree here. We have future planning. Using ability reduces all other ability cooldowns uh, by 4% of the remaining time. Also, very interesting one. Again, we already had a lot of perks here in, in this side that reduce cooldowns, and that would interact with that as well. So you can stack all of that on top of each other. You have on a roll. Uh, triggering an ability increases all damage taken by 3% for 10 seconds, stacks up to 5 times. Kind of a weird one. I, I don't really see when you would use that, when you could just have like fortify aggression. You're not going to spam that many abilities, not with the cooldowns that you have on most abilities here. Uh, the only one that's a bit shorter, I think, is uh, Mortar Charge. Then you have uh, Bite Back. Every pellet that is a headshot reduces all cooldowns by 0.5%. I don't really think you're going to be aiming for the head with a Blunderbuss. Uh, I'm assuming at least, because I'm assuming the spread is going to be too big for that. So I'm guessing you're not going to get all too much value out of this one, from what I can tell so far. Could be, like, could be misinterpreting how the Blunderbuss projectile is going to work, but otherwise a lot of things like would proc way too easily, like this one as well. Uh, Bugshot, deal 10% increased damage to any target as long as you have not damaged them in the last 8 seconds. Kind of nice for like in increased initial damage, but also not something where I'd be like, this is mandatory, this is the first thing you get or something. I think usually you would probably find better perks. Artillery, direct damage from abilities is increased by 15% if the victim is 10 meters or further away. This obviously plays directly into mortar charge as well. It's basically another 15% uh, damage increase on mortar charge, especially. It would, it would work on, on shrapnel blast as well, for example. So uh, definitely something nice. Or even like, yeah, even on, on hook shot, uh, on claw shot and probably a net shot. It doesn't actually specify the range. Uh, maybe, who knows. 
And then we have last chance. Whenever you take a hit and your health is below 50%, gain 50% damage reduction for 4 seconds, 30 seconds cooldown. Insane. It's like, actually a crazy perk. No conditions, 30 seconds cooldown, extremely short, and lasts for 4 seconds. I am assuming that this is Fortify. So if you're like close to Fortify cap, it's not going to benefit you much because basically for the fire cap on its own but even then like a free fortify if you drop down there i'll take it i think that's a very good perk to have so right side definitely has a lot of good perks to have and then we have double down once every 30 seconds your next ability used will have its cooldown reduced by 50 percent this is uh where we're, this is where this perk comes in a little bit more i guess but um most certainly something nice as well. If you can get that on a blast shot and you can get that again 15 seconds later, I think that's huge. I would argue this perk is probably better than Unload um, because Unload really uh, primarily, I would say, uh, benefits Claw Shot. It's still a strong perk. It still gives you extra damage. It's absolutely useful. I don't think it's a bad perk at all. But I think 50% uh, cooldown reduction is just very, very good. Especially when you can like apply other effects that reduce it further afterwards and stuff like that uh, so this one for example like i think you could basically have use net shot have the reduced cooldown of that of 10 seconds and then you also get another 20 percent reduction and normally these reductions you like in, in your world use the base value of cooldown which would take off another four seconds otherwise it would take off two seconds but if it takes off another four seconds then the, cool, the cooldown is now six seconds, and that's before any cooldown reduction on your armor and so on. So, yeah, it's basically a double net shot at that point. So, very interesting. We can have a quick look at, like, potential builds here. I think uh, something that you could consider is uh, going basically this way. Um, and then in this tree, you probably still get the 15% damage. Um... Maybe you'd get the, the haste here, maybe the fortify. We'll have a look how much we have left. Um, and then you would have a look here. You would get some cone reduction here. Uh, I guess you would get this perk because you can't get anything else to go further. Uh, but again, something about the order here may actually be a bit messed up. Uh, we won't need this one because it's actually referring to this. Uh, we're going to have buckshot then, and we're going to go this, this, this. And then uh, we can actually... Uh, get last chance here and we get extended chamber and we can then we'd have like okay we could have eight nine can we get so we could technically go like this and this that would max that out yeah i don't think we would reach this that we I think we yeah we'd have to have an extra point here okay we can't reach this yeah so we have to like go like this but um you could I suppose you could also say, you know, Deep Load is not that important for me. Or the extra damage from Barb Netting is not that important for me. Uh, and then you could maybe get the Double Down Corner Reduction, which could actually be more value. Uh, just depending on, on your playstyle, if you're looking more like to be self-sufficient or more looking for team play. So, yeah, I, I would assume that this extra shot is probably going to be quite valuable. Uh, I would probably be most inclined to... Uh, to maybe take out Bob netting, but let's take, take out Deep Lord just for the sake of it. Uh, and then we would just say, okay, we have some extra range. And well, at this point, it really doesn't matter. We can just get the Fortify and then we would be able to get Double Down, which would allow us to get the cooldown reduction for these already very short cooldown skills and have a ton of CC. On the other hand, obviously, you could also just take all away, like most of this tree away and just go into Aether Shrapnel Blast and get the extra damage from here and just go all left tree. Or you could go for a modded style playstyle, or like just a damage focused playstyle in general. Maybe just uh, shrapnel blast, splitting grenade, modded charge. But then you're relatively short on safety tools, so maybe you would get like the two of them, and then I, I don't know how the the, the back fire range essentially on net shot and uh, shrapnel blast is respectively, or if it would be safer to get blast shot to CC enemies. Uh, that's something you know that you'd have to determine based on how they work exactly. But I think there's definitely room. Uh, to work with so far um very interesting perks what we haven't looked at here is the extra effects on um on the right tree for these three abilities so let's do that real quick and we have plagued splitting grenade uh which is just a 15 percent healing reduction for eight seconds 
this depends a lot on the area you can cover with it and how reliable it is. Again, I really don't know how effective this ability will be in PvP, so it's hard to judge if it's going to be worth it, but it might be. It's a, maybe it's just a very widespread anti-heal. Then for the Mortar Charge, we have uh, Mortar Charge Kill reloads one additional canister. Limited to one reload per shot, will not reload past three canisters. So I'm assuming not more than three reloads. But if you if you were to get three kills, you would have a total of six shots plus that extra shot that you can get as well, I think. So you would get be able to get seven shots, maybe. Uh, sounds pretty good. Sounds like a lot of damage. You just have to get kills, which is not necessarily that easy. So yeah, depends. And then last we have the crippling blast shot, which I think is very strong as well because it's uh, targets hit by blast shot are slowed, reducing movement speed by 19% for five seconds. And keep in mind, this is an ability that already knocks enemies down and you could stack that with a net shot and then you stack it with the apparatus effect so that basically um, the weaker part of the apparatus effect uh, towards the end could be offset by blast shots uh, additional slow and you just, yeah, very much perma-slowing someone. And then maybe if you get some cool reduction, you can like double fire it and it's just over for them. So very interesting CC tools, mobility tools, damage tools. Uh, a lot of stuff here in this uh, blunderbuss skill tree that I think is very interesting that I'm looking forward to. And obviously I want to see how it really feels in game before I make uh, a full judgment. It's it's going to be hard to tell because uh, even with Void Gauntlet, like its true potential only really showed once it was usable in wars and not so much in, in random scenarios. Uh, and we'll see how that will be for blunderbuss. But I'm going to try it out. With that, thank you guys very much for watching. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, clicking the bell so you get notified of other upcoming videos. I will be making some Tiny Tina's Wonderlands videos in the next days. If you'd like to see those, uh, consider clicking the bell and clicking on all notifications so you get notified of that. And I hope to see you for the next one soon. Duke Sloth, out.